Psalm 127. A song of degrees for Solomon. Not by Solomon, but for Solomon. Except the Lord build the house. Well, this is before the temple, I would assume. It'd be quite odd to... Hey, Solomon, you built the temple. Okay, now he that built the house. They labor in vain, emptiness of no value that build it. So Solomon, before you build that temple, it better be God that builds it. It better be God in all and about all, searching all. Except the Lord keep the city, would be Jerusalem. The watchman waketh but in vain. The watchman that keeps an eye on the city, he just mounts to just stay in bed if God's not in charge. I mean, when Babylon was taken over, this is about Jerusalem, when Babylon was taken over, they rerouted the whole river, lowered the river, went through the gates under the walls of the city, uh, the Medes and the Persians, forget which, and conquered Jerusalem. God was in the Medes and the Persians conquering Babylon. So Babylon just might have stayed asleep, and they stayed asleep, and they were overthrown. Judah would be overthrown in the time of Jeremiah. There is no protection of your city if God is not for you, and God does not protect you, and that goes for all in any city in the world. Old Testament, New Testament, church age, tribulation. So the first verse of this context about Solomon is, you better stay right with God. And we know he doesn't. We know he marries multiple wives and falls into the worship of his wives of the heathen. So if Solomon read this, this psalm, he sure didn't stick to it. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. You get up early in the morning and you go to bed late at night to get the full day more than normal, more than eight hours, and you spend the time in sorrow and anxiety, sweating it out. For so he, God, giveth his beloved sleep. Now Solomon writes much about the sluggard and the lazy man about its sleep, too much sleep, They're not enough work. And the psalmist in 127 writes the opposite. You need sleep. And there is a good sleep when you've been working. Nothing like doing a hard job, coming home and at night going to bed and you just sleep like you didn't sleep forever. And that's of God. And getting up early, going to bed late, seems to be going against, you know, it's too early. It's too late. And that would be ruining your health because you do need sleep. And you do need to be awake. And in life, we got to have that perfect balance. We cannot go lack of sleep and we cannot go too much sleep. We got to have enough. And it's not where scientists say, you know, you got to have eight or nine hours. It depends on what that day is. Man, you, you've done a lot today. And you, you got a lot accomplished. And you don't have much to do the next day. Get a little extra sleep. You got a lot tomorrow planned and so much to do. Go to bed a little earlier. Get a little more sleep. low and we go to a complete change in subject children are the heritage of the lord where do children come from they come from god there it is uh you know 
or had an accidental birth. There is no accidental birth. You realize when you're involved in a relationship with somebody, it's outside of marriage, it's outside of adultery, it's outside of fornication, as David with Bathsheba produces a baby, that baby was of God. Children are an heritage of the Lord. What are you going to do with that verse? The fruit of the womb is a reward. Is the embryo life. Fruit. It's life. It's of God. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, we're still on the same subject, so children are, so children of the youth. And the sound is like is to a man going to battle, and if he's got many arrows to fight, so should be the children. As much as a military man go into battle, takes as much arrows he can, so a youth will have children. And the presence of the laws of the, of the country of China restricting how many children So are the, the children of you. Now granted he's writing to Solomon an Israelite. Okay. We can take the aspect it's written to the Jewish people. Have all the children you want. But had Solomon already married the Egyptian Pharaoh's daughter? And he does. Happy is the man that has a quiver, that's what holds the arrows, full of them, full of arrows, full of children. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with, with the enemies in the gate. And there are some people, I mean, there are families, they just have multiple children. And I've heard people complain, or, oh, look at that family over there. <laughs> look, at, look at them over there. The guy is an evangelist, has no certain job, and look at all the children they got. That's a heritage of the Lord. It is the fruit of the room. And it's as many as the arrows a man can carry. Now, also, let's take the Bible verse, let's take it as it is. There's only so many arrows a mighty man can carry. I mean, a mighty man is going to carry armor, he's going to carry his, his weapons, he's going to carry the ammunition, he's going to carry food, he's going to carry water. He may have to carry, there may be too much. So what do you do when we got this abortion issue in the world today? What's your stance on abortion? Children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is, is his, the fruit of the womb is his uh, reward. The Bible says, get many as children you can get. How more can you get than that? And anything other than that is a devil's lie. It's anti-scripture, it's anti-Bible, it's anti-God. And what do you do if you do abort a baby? You are killing life. You are stealing a gift of God, a heritage of God, you are taking away the reward of God. When you follow the Bible and to say the fact is that the marriage bed is the only sexual relations, anything else is adultery and fornication, you ought not been shacking up in your own personal word. But let me say the biblical word, you ought not have been committing adultery, you ought not have been fornicating, you would not have that child. You want to have a life? You want your life to be your life and nobody else's life and take care of nobody? Have absolutely, have nobody strain you down and give you no complication, give you no chain? Then you free yourself from the bed and you do what you want to do, but don't you get involved in adultery and don't you get involved in 
fornication, then you may have a, a burden which you call, and if you abort that burden, now you are a murderer. You are now involved in adultery, fornication, or murder. And don't you dare step into marriage and think, we're not going to have children. You know, that's the first step that the marriage was. He said, Adam, be fruitful and multiply. I will give you a help me. That help me was Eve, was the woman. That woman's job was to what? Produce offspring. You don't want to have children. You become a biblical eunuch and you do not have any relation because if you're a eunuch and have relations, you're committing adultery, you commit fornication. Now let's read the whole verse in context of the whole verse because we got verses we got verse one and two and three and four and five. First verse, Solomon building the temple. Really? Is that what you think? That's what you think, isn't it? You think it's all about the temple. You think all about the church house. And you're wrong. Yeah, it's about the temple, but let's look at it like this. Except the Lord build the house. The children, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Well, that's a physical building. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thy house. Acts 16.31 Are you telling me that that Philippian uh, jailer got saved and his building got saved? Is that what you're trying to tell me? See, that's where you get all of the church out. Let's all go to the church out. Does not Paul write to the Christians saying, we are the body of Christ, we are the building? How about the writer of uh, of the psalm, right? The psalm, and what about psalm? What about your house? What about the future children you're going to have? Except the Lord build the house. Okay, let's step away from the temple. Let's step away from a building. Let's do house. You say, well, David said, let us go in the house of the Lord. I was pleased when they said, let us go in the house of the Lord. What was in that tabernacle? There was God. There were the priests. There were the Israelites. But let's look at the verse. Is houses. So except the Lord build the house. Well, children are the heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Let if you want to live right. You get saved. You get married. How do we know we got too few children? How do we know we got too many children? Let the Lord build the house. And there's one thing I've known in my Christian life, and I think about one family, and I still pray for them. I, I don't know what ever happened to them. I hope they're still married. But the woman had a, a miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. And even after we left that church, for another, we you know, just miscarried. And you hear so often there are a Christian couple, they want to have a baby, and they try to have a baby, and they can't. And they try, and they can't. It's sad. Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is their reward. My wife Lisa needed medical help for her body to produce children. But God was able to give us children. And when we had our children, we decided that we were going to have a third child. What we actually would have been our fourth child. One child was a was a, a miscarriage and but two children we, we said we want to have a third child which we call the tiebreaker and well she needed a doctor we went to, back to the doctor and they would give you a test and, and from that test we find out that she had cancer and evidently from there she would have died of that cancer We went to the Lord and said, Lord, we want to have another baby. What do you say to that? 
God said cancer. God said death. Who's going to call God right? Who's going to call God wrong? I know people who have. I know people blame God for all the troubles. Except the Lord build a house. Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is their reward. You say, well, there's plenty of unsaved people out there who have babies and children. and I don't have all the answers. But an unsaved person is not going to run to the Bible. But a saved man who reads the Bible throughout throughout the year and studies his Bible comes across this verse and say, If I do have children, they're of God. They are my responsibility. If we don't have children, we want children, we don't have them, then it's not God's reward. It's not his heritage. Except the Lord build a house. Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. They labor in vain that build it. God's not going to build your family. You don't have a family to build. Accept it as it is and go on with your life serving the Lord as husband and wife. Accept the Lord keep the city. Okay, that would be Jerusalem. The watchman went waketh but in vain. Tom, and you got a whole city of people. Why would you want more? You got enough responsibility. It's vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow. Sorrows of not having children and sorrows of having too many children. You imagine that moment and the Bible says Eve knew. She said when she had her third son, God has given me another son to replace Abel that Cain slain. She knew what Cain did. You imagine that moment when the word came home that her, her son had been killed by her other son. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. How do I be clean? Maybe instead of the marriage bed, maybe just go to sleep. Solomon goes to write in the book of the glass, there's a time to die, there's a time to live, there's a time to pull away, there's a time to gather stone. There's a time for this, there's a time for that. There's a time for a marriage relation. There's a time to go to sleep. There's a time to get up. There's a time for marriage relation. And lo, children are the heritage of the Lord. Children come from God. Put that above the doors of Planned Parenthood or any uh, abortion assembly. Now I have one standard. It says over there in the Old Testament, if you come across uh, uh, eggs and, and, a, and a, a bird, you're to put the, the mother bird up in the tree. You can take the eggs and do what you want with them. My stance. I believe it's biblical. If the life is between the mother or the child, I believe the mother is to be spared at all costs. Now, not everybody's going to believe that. Not everybody's going to. Are we going to have opposition? But. Are we not supposed to put things in the hands of the Lord? I have never been in that situation. I wonder what one not to be in that situation. I would not ever have to make that decision. 
that decision had to be made with much prayer and much fasting. Children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. And arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, a soldier. So are children of the youth. Happy is a man that has a quiver of children full of them. They shall not be ashamed. They. The man. Verse 5. A man. The man. They. They is not the man. Who is the they? Who is the multiple group of people? Not the man. The, the, the children. If that man is living right, that man is serving the Lord, that man is doing right by the Lord, and he's training his wife, and he's training his children as he should be, they're not going to be ashamed. Because he's built the house on the Lord, and you thought that was a temple. You know, there's many Christians don't do what they're supposed to do, and they live lukewarm. They think they're great. They think they're wonderful. I think I read that somewhere. And as far as their family, not the building, as far as their family, their church, what's their church? Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them, the father or husband, the mother or the, or the wife, and the children. That's a church right there. You don't go to church if you got a safe family. You're at the church right there. And if you don't build that house by the Lord, verse 1, you and your wife and your children are going to be a chain one day. When they when the works are put before the Lord, and you're going to find wood, hay, or stubble. Because the Father did not take responsibility. But they, the children, shall speak with the enemy in the gate. I don't know. The gate is where business matters are taken care of. It's the city hall. It's where legal matters. It's where Boaz met with, with uh, uh, their brother who had legal rights to, to take roots to be the husband they met in the city gate they got the people together according to that his children are going to be in the gates they're going to be doing trials they're going to be doing court they're going to be doing legal business even with the enemy job did that job was a was a a judge they're going to be people of authority if you raise your house right correctly. I think we miss the complex when we say it's Solomon building a temple. Because why is, why is one verse, one verse, all about the temple, and you got verse two about sleeping, okay? But then you got three verses of five, it's talking about children. And the key word is verse 1, the house. we got to get our head out of the gutter when we think about church and church. we got to get it out of wood, stone, bricks, and nails, and stained glass windows, and doors, and other. All the churches are closed. Is there a saved man, saved woman, saved children in their house today? How can you say the church house is closed? Now, you may have unfaithful church gatherings throughout the world. Those children are going to be in great, great shame. If the father, the husband, is not taking his spiritual lead. Father, husband, it is your job to train your family. The Bible says if, if a wife has a question... She's to go home and ask her husband. Father, you get your children more than the Sunday school gets your children. 
It's not the property of the government to take care of your children. It is your property. It is of God that he gave you the children. And as far as the life of the child and all that, they're given by God, pro-life. And then, anybody against the thinking that God gives us children? Anybody who's against that thought, you're anti-scripture. Every child, low children, doesn't say Israeli children, it doesn't say unsaved children, it doesn't say saved children, low children are inheritance of the Lord and the fruit of the womb, doesn't say saved womb, doesn't say lost womb, is his God's reward. And then verse 4, 5, get as many as, you, as, God will, as God will give you. The ultimate failure with the children is, the ultimate failure with the children is, is the man that sired them, the man that made them. That's the failure. 